This week, a piece of software called Mini Office 2 reached number one in the software charts, and it's not even a Zappo game. It's available for many popular micros, and people are buying it because you get a spreadsheet, a database, communications, and a word processor, all for about £17. But now, at the other end of the market, Leslie continues our look at word processing with some business systems. Well, word processors started appearing in the office and typing pools about 10 years ago. Today in Britain, there are about 100,000 of them in use. Now, with a word processor, one operator can do the work of three or four typists. A dedicated word processor, like uh, this one from Wang, which is fairly typical, is a computer that's designed specifically for the task of word processing. Now, a system like this will cost anything from oh, around £6,000. So, Elaine, what sort of thing is the businessman going to get for his money? Well, this is a true multi-user system. Currently, you can have up to 192 users on the system, on one system, and then you can network those systems together. We at Wang, in fact, use 853 systems networked worldwide. But for the small businessman, he's, his um, investment is protected uh, for his workstations and printers, and if he wishes to add more uh, workstations to the systems, it only costs him £1,600. So he'd have no redundant machines as he enlarged up? That's right. But what about small businesses, uh, us, the ordinary users, who haven't probably got £6,000 to spend on this sort of equipment? Well, last year, Amstrad launched this, a complete word processing package for less than £400. And that price and the sort of all-in-one box approach made many people consider buying a word processor for the very first time. Well, I've been joined by Lynn McTaggart, the editor of uh, Which Computer Magazine. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Lizzie. Now, I believe you've just done a sort of expose of word processing packages which is due out next month so shall we start by uh, can you tell me how you rated the old Amstrad we considered it a good buy but not if you're using a word processor constantly uh, for one thing the screen isn't is kind of hard on your eyes and also it's it's a little plasticky and we're not sure how dura, dura, durable it'll be mm. in uh, over long-term use um, also at that kind of price um, you can't really expect after sale support but after all at £399, you get a printer, um, a computer, and, and software. So, I mean, really, you could throw it away after a year or two. Sort of dispensable, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. But, I mean, having said that, computer's the operative word, because the Amstrad actually is just that. It's a computer cleverly marketed as a word processor. But now, with all uh, personal computers running uh, word processing packages, and with there being so many of these packages on the market, I don't know where to start. I mean, how would I choose, for me, the right package? It all depends on what you need it for. Uh, mm -hmm. Broadly speaking, word processors sort of fall into three categories. There's those for secretaries who are doing copy typing and need to make things look pretty. And there's ones for writers who need, need word processors to create words. And then there are word processors for uh, people who haven't used them very much, managers, people like that. Mm. Um, and it all, you know, it really depends on what you need it for. Right. OK, well, let's say I'm a secretary. Mm -hmm. In which direction would you point me? Uh, I guess millions of secretaries really uh, were brought up on WordStar. Yes, I tried being brought up on <laughs> WordStar this afternoon. I find it very tricky to get the hang of. Uh, for a start, you've got this help menu which takes up half of the screen. I, I really would like to get rid of it, but I daren't because I need it to remind me of uh, which keys to press to, uh, to, to get the commands to work. Um, for instance, a simple command like delete, well, you have to do Control G, that's for delete a character, uh, delete a word, Control T, delete a line, control Y. That all seems fairly simple, but of course, sometimes you've got as many as three key presses for one command, and if you multiply that by the hundreds of commands there are on WordStar, you've got so much to remember. Uh, I, I don't know why it's so popular. It's popular because it's really the granddaddy of word processing. I'm, um, so many people have learned it that um, once you spend three months going through it, you don't want to spend that amount of time on something new. Um, the other thing is it was written by programmers um, without really speaking to business people about how they think and work. Yeah. But, but once, presumably once you have got it under your belt, I would guess that it's very flexible and it's possibly easy to use. Well, it's one of those things that's good for making, th making documents pretty. Yeah. It's very good if you need repetitive tasks done, like mail shots. Mm. And um, it's particularly good for setting up screens. Uh, so, uh, ideally, this, this kind of package is good for a secretary. Right. Well, uh, to be fair to the people who make WordStar, they've now got WordStar 2000, that's their new package, and that is supposed to be easier to learn how to use. Yes. Well, now, now we come to people who maybe only use their word processing facilities once a month, um, even once a week. Even in that short time, it's terribly easy to forget the right commands. And that's why Apple have tried a different approach by making the whole system really simple to use. And this system, it really is simple. For a start, you've got a mouse. Uh, let me show you how you sort of 
manipulate the te text around. This is at the moment uh, uh, center justified. Supposing I want to change that and to try it, see how the layout looks justified to the left. No, it's a mess. It's all ragged at the edge. So easy as anything, pull down menu, go back to center justify, it changes. Supposing I don't like the font, perhaps I might want something a little bit more grand than that. Then all I do is uh, highlight the text that I want to change. Come on, highlight. That's it. Highlight it right through. That's it. Uh, and then select the font menu. I'll go for Venetian because that sounds really grand. <laughs> and say, oh, look at that. Well, that's very attractive. And you see, I didn't even touch the keyboard at all. That is a piece of cake. Who's it yes. aimed at? This is for managers and professionals who really aren't used to a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And it's for very simple inputting of text for things like notes and, um, oh, the results of telephone conversations. Yeah. I would imagine, though, if you were fairly dexterous on the keyboard, and once you've got the hang of it, then this would become very cumbersome, having to change back all the time. Oh, that's the ironic thing of it, Leslie. Um, things that are easy to learn are not necessarily easy to, mm. to use. Um, and vice versa. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, if you're a touch typist, you might find it cumbersome to let go of the keyboard in order to move that mouse around. Well, fortunately, with this system, you can transfer the command back to the keyboard, which is a good thing. Yes. Right, now let's come on to people who, who are going to earn their living by writing, uh, like yourself, mm. like authors and journalists mm. and things like that. What would you recommend for them? Which computer says that um, things like WordPerfect and Samna are very good for writers because they're mainly built to handle long documents. Um, they're also very good at re reorganizing and revising text, things like editing and changing words. And um, they have all sorts of sort of add-on goody crutches for writers, like uh, spelling checkers and word counts and, and things like thesauruses. Ah, now that one interests me, because I've never seen a thesaurus on a computer mm. before, so I want to try well, a little bit of text, a sort of bogus letter. Ah, right, and the cursor is right on the word powerful, and powerful is a word that we are always using, and we're always being asked to find another word mm. for it. So let's see what the thesaurus gives us. Well, first of all, I'll tell the system that I want to replace that word. We could replace it with, uh, how about puissant? Puissant software? <laughs> no, stalwart, robust, hardy, author. I think strong is wonderfully imaginative. And look at that, it changes in the text immediately. Mm -hmm. Actually, that just goes to show why we use powerful. It's because it's the right word. <laughs> um, what would the system like this cost me? About 400 to 500 pounds right now. Uh, does that mean it's going down? Yeah, with the, as the price of the PC drops, so does the price of software. And in fact, we just reviewed a package this month that's a 100 pound copycat version of WordStar. Right. Now, we've, uh, we've looked at a whole range here. We've gone right, right from the top end, we've got the £6,000 worth of Wang right the way through down to the £400 worth of Amstrad. How does somebody start to make a choice? What should their priorities be, really, do you think? Well, it's, it's really what you need first before uh, how, how much it costs. Consider whether the person is, is going to be using it to make documents pretty, to actually create words, or just for notes, and uh, someone who isn't used, for, uh, used to the keyboard. Then worry about the price. Yeah. And also, mess up, uh, you know, work around, the, um, use the word processor, yeah. uh, uh, tinker around with it a bit to see if those, um, those commands make sense to you. Right, so if the, opera, if the, if the, uh, the logic fits you. Yes. Right, thanks, Lynn, very much. Thank you. Now, of course, once you've uh, written your masterpiece, the next stage is to get it onto paper. And that can mean much more than just printing it out. Later in the series, we'll be looking at the whole subject of so-called desktop publishing.